The word of life for today comes from Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 through 10. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 through 10. And I will now read Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 through 10 says, You are also to count off seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, so that you have the time of seven Sabbaths of years, namely 49 years. You shall then sound a ram's horn abroad on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, you shall sound a horn all through your land. You shall thus consecrate the 50th year and proclaim a release through the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. This is the word of God. Amen. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank the Loimus Praise Team for the wonderful praise. Today, based on Leviticus 25, 8 through 10, I want to share with you a message entitled, Sound the Ram's Horn on the Jubilee. So uh, we've been talking about the Jubilee since last week because our upcoming praise night, the theme for the praise night is the Jubilee, right? So today I want to share with you a little bit about the meaning of the word Jubilee, where that comes from, and what that means for us. So I I think I said it last week also, but the, the, the word Jubilee comes from the Hebrew word Yobel, which literally means ram or ram's horn, because the the trumpet that they blew on the jubilee, at the beginning of the jubilee, was made out of ram's horn, okay? Um, So what's the importance, what's the significance of the ram's horn? Why is that so important, okay? So first... It is because this ram's horn reminds us of what happened uh, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. Anybody know what happened there without looking that up? Nobody cares. (laughs) No. Genesis 22 is where God tested Abraham and told him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice offering, right? So Abraham obeyed, he took Isaac to a mountain in Moriah and bound him up and he was about to kill him, right, with a knife. And God says, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham says, yes, here I am. He says, do not touch the child. Now I know that you fear me. And then what happened? In Genesis 22, verse 13, it says, then Abraham raised his eyes and looked And behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. Okay? In the place of his son. So that the ram here that was caught by its horn, right? Ram and ram's horn. This ram became the substitute to die in place of Abraham's son, Isaac, right? So in essence, Abraham received Isaac back from the dead, okay? Isaac was supposed to die, but he received him back from the dead because of this ram that was caught by its horn in the thicket. So this became a very important thing for the Israelites. This is something that they told their children for generations to come. They told the story. Oh, our ancestor Abraham, God tested him and told him to kill his son and offer him as a burnt offering. And Abraham obeyed. That's why he became the father of faith. And when he was about to kill him, there was this ram caught by its horn. 
And that became the substitute. That's why Isaac was saved. So that ram's horn is very important. That's what saved Isaac's life. So for us then, first of all, this ram foreshadows Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died in our place. He was our substitute. We were supposed to die like Isaac because we're all sinners. But Jesus died in our place so that we could receive our life back. Now we are a new. We're a new creation in Jesus Christ. And this, basically, this story right here contains the spirit of the Jubilee. What is the Jubilee? Jubilee is the 50th year where you sound the horn, and when you hear that horn, basically it's telling everybody, this is the year where all your slaves are supposed to be let go, go back home, they're free to go. All the property that you lost, that ancestral inheritance that you gained, but then you sold off because you know, your business went bad or whatever, you're going to get it all back. If you have debts, those debts will all be remitted. You don't have to pay it back. And you could all go back to your family and your property and live there. That's the jubilee. So right here, Abraham received his son back from the dead. Isaac was freed from death, liberated from death. He's now able to go back to his family, go back to his father, and live a free life. So this here contains the spirit of the Jubilee. That's what God wants to do for us right now. He wants to free us so that we could go back to our family, back to our inheritance, and receive our true life back. So where is that? Where is our family? Where is that property? What is our true life? That's what we need to figure out. So on a similar vein, remember in Luke chapter 15, verses 17 through 20, it's the story about the prodigal son. We've all heard the story, right? This rich man had two sons, and one of them wanted his inheritance before his father died. He wanted to get all his inheritance you know, beforehand, early, right? He took all that money, he went out, and he started to party. He went out drinking, doing whatever, you know? And he wasted all that money away. And then he became a beggar. He was sleeping with the pigs, eating like pig's fodder. And then in verse 17, it says, he came to his senses. All of a sudden, he just kind of woke up. Whoa, why am I here like this? Why am I living like a pig? Because in my father's house, if I could be like a, a servant in my father's house, I would be doing better off than what I'm doing right now, right? So he got up, came back to his father and said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your servants. But before he was even able to say all this, his father saw him from coming afar, ran out, met him, kissed him, told his servants to throw a party, put nice clothes on him, put a ring on his finger, gave him new shoes. That ring on his finger, you know what that means? In ancient times, those rings were signet rings, right? They're like seals. Instead of signing, you know, we put our signature when we sign contracts. In ancient times, you had a seal, and you seal it like that, right? So that ring is his father's signet ring. What that means is now he has control over all of his father's property. He could do whatever he wants with it. He's giving it all to him. So father received him back. So that moment for the prodigal son, that's his jubilee. He came back home. He received his life back. So that's what we want to get. That's what we want to receive. And even though our, you know, Michael people came together and had a meeting and came up with this theme for the praise night, I believe it was God who gave this to us. November 9th will be our jubilee, and it will be the jubilee for many people who will come that night. They're going to return back to their rightful place. 
to their father's house, to God's household, and receive their inheritance back. That's what I believe, and that's what I'm praying for. That's what we should all be praying for, right? Amen? That's the kind of heart that we need to have as we go out to evangelize for this event. So this incident with Abraham Isaac was the beginning of when the ram's horns started to become significant for the Israelites. And then, point number two, the first time in the Bible that the ram's horn was blown like a trumpet was where? It's in Exodus chapter 19, verse 13, at Mount Sinai. Okay, that's the first time they used the ram's horn and used it as, as a trumpet to make this blast sound. So in Exodus chapter 19, verse 13, it says, No hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So let me explain what that verse is talking about. So in Exodus chapter 19, the Israelites came out of Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 19, verse 1, they first arrived at Mount Sinai. And God told Moses to come up the mountain. And God said, I want to make a covenant with the people of Israel. So Moses came back down and told them, God wants to make a covenant with us. And everybody said, amen, yes, we want that too. So Moses went back up and told God. The people said, yes. And God said, okay. Then this mountain is a holy mountain. So until the covenant is ratified, make sure nobody comes on this mountain except for you. That was God's warning, okay? If you come near the mountain, if you just touch it, you're going to die. That's what this verse is saying. Even if it's just an animal, it accidentally comes on the mountain, it's going to die. God was very serious. And then God said, go down and make them consecrate themselves for three days to prepare to meet with God. So Moses went down and did that. He told everybody, you have to consecrate yourselves. Keep yourself holy and clean for three days because in three days, God's going to come down on the mountain and we're going to meet with him. We're going to make this covenant. We're going to become his people. He will become our God, right? It's a very important ceremony. So God says, don't come near the mountain until when? In the second half of Exodus 19, 13, it says, when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. Only after you hear the sound of the ram's horn, you could come up to God's holy mountain and meet with him. That's the only time. Until then, you can't go near it. It's holy ground. You'll be struck dead. That was the first time that the ram's horn sound came, uh, you know, on the scene here in the Bible, okay, at Mount Sinai. So what does that mean for us? Simply put, it means this. As I have always been telling you guys, we did not choose God. God chose us. We didn't choose when we're going to come to God. God chose that time as well. So in other words, the sound of the ram's horn signifies a spiritual jubilee for the Israelites. When you hear the ram's horn, you could come to God, meet with God, come into his presence. That sound signifies that God has accepted you to be his people. Even though we're sinners, God's forgiven us. Now you could come meet with him. It's like, you know, you know the story of Esther? When the king of Persia comes and you go to shake the king's hand without the permission, what happens? What happened in ancient times? The sword came out and just psh, cut your head off or something, right? You can't just go to the king without getting permission. It's like in today's t- also like, let's say the president of the United States came around. If you just ran up to him, what would happen? Secret service will tackle you, right? It's the same thing. 
You can't just go to God without permission. God has to allow it to happen. And what signal tells us that it has been permitted? The ram's horn. The sound of the ram's horn is the signal that says, now you can come. Now you can come to see me. Now you can come into my presence. Now you have become my people. For the Israelites, that happened at Mount Sinai. And for each of us, that all happens at different times in our life. So what this is teaching us is that I didn't choose to come here and listen to God's word on my own initiative. No. It it may feel like it, but it's not like that. In fact, what happened was it was God who spiritually sounded the ram's horn and enabled you to come here and hear this word. See, just because you want it, it's not going to happen. And you will experience that. I have experienced that. Okay? It's God who has to permit it. So for the Israelites, he freed them from Egypt. Liberation, right? And he enabled them to come to God, to become his people, his family, to receive their inheritance, which is Canaan. So in essence, this covenant ceremony here at Mount Sinai is like a spiritual jubilee. So we all need a spiritual jubilee in our life. If we want to become part of God's family, if we want to say, God, you are our father, we are your children. And I pray that God will enable that to happen for all of us here today. On November 9th, may it be our spiritual jubilee. Amen? So if you look in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, this is what it says. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, right? It says you are part of what? God's household. In Greek, the word for household here is oikos, which means family or home. Now you're part of God's family. In the past, you were strangers and aliens. You were nobody. But God called you to himself. Now you're part of God's family and his household. Amen? So for example, for myself as well, when I used to be in college, or starting from high school, you know, I started coming to church because my parents took me to church in high school. And I sat there, kind of like some of you guys, some dozing off sometimes thinking about something else, wondering when the sermon is going to be over in 10 more minutes. But then one day, okay, it's, after a couple of years, I was in college. It was just any other Sunday, right? I was just sitting there every week because my parents made me. And one day, it was different. One day we're doing Bible study, and I remember the Bible study even now very clearly, even though that was like two years ago (laughs) or 20 years ago, whatever. For some reason, it was the same person doing the same Bible study, but it hit me in a different way, like some lightning striking your heart, right? And it was like, it really, my heart was, felt like it was burning with it, okay? And I tried not to show it, but it was very different. And then a few weeks later, our senior pastor came. When I, this was when I was in L.A., and he said, I think you should become a pastor. And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> That's what happened. Okay? So what, what I'm trying to say is that day for me was like my jubilee. And that particular Bible study for me was my ram's horn. It was different than anything else. I don't know why. 
So everybody has a different time and a, and a different way of this happening. But God has his own timing. But just imagine this. Imagine if I wasn't there on that day. Imagine I had been there all that time for several years, and then on that day I was out somewhere, out in the beach, hanging out or whatever. When the ram's horn sounded, then I would have missed my jubilee, right? And I have to wait 50 more years. Senior pastor said, the jubilee comes around only once in a lifetime for most people. Because remember, it's every 50 years, right? If you miss out, you could be lucky. It comes around once early in your life, and you live long enough, you could live to the next one. But for most people, it's just going to be once in a lifetime, spiritually speaking as well. For me, that was that one time. But imagine if I weren't there. You miss out. That's it. You missed your chance. The bus has left. You're going to have to walk or whatever. Right? So think about that. Sitting here may feel like, oh, it's just a drag. But we're here for that one day, not for every day. Or maybe it could be that all those days that I was sitting there, something was getting in through my ear and getting into my brain and into my heart, I guess. And it was all building up for that one day. Who knows? But whatever it may be, everybody has a chance. And that day of Jubilee where the ram's horn will sound, that day will come. That's why we're here. And maybe for some of us, it has already come. And if, if it has, then God wants you to now work for him. The second time the ram's horn was bl- blown was when God was conquering Jericho. Not Jericho, New York, but Jericho, Canaan. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 4 through 5. Remember the story where God told them to walk around the city once every day, and on the seventh day, march around it seven times, and then blast the ram's horn. And when you hear that sound, everybody shout and run, in, run towards the city because the walls will come crumbling down. Jericho was the first city that they conquered in the land of Canaan, the promised land, right? So this was when they were now returning to their rightful property. They were returning to their inheritance, the land of Canaan. That's theirs, right? And when the ram's horn sounded, the walls came crumbling, and they were able to conquer it. It became theirs. God enabled them to retake it. So what, what do all of these things mean? It, it means freedom, receiving our life back. Okay? It means the ability to return to your rightful family, which is our father's family, right? God's household right here at church. And then finally, it means retaking your rightful inheritance, the property, the land, which is this world. This world is God's, and therefore it belongs to his children, not the children of darkness. But right now, who is in charge of this world? The Bible says the devil is the king of this world right now. So we need to take it back. In the end times, when Christ returns, he will return at the sound of the trumpet. And the sound of the trumpet in the Bible symbolizes the proclamation of the word of God. The sound of the trumpet is what? It symbolizes the proclamation of God's word. And for me, on that day, I heard God's word. It not just heard it with my ears, but it really touched me. Right? That's my jubilee. And for you guys, hopefully, that day will come as well. 
and for all the people that we're thinking of inviting to our event. Let us pray that their ears will be open, that their hearts will be open, that they will be able to hear the sound of the ram's horn on that day. Amen? So everybody whom God has chosen before the ages, whom God has foreordained for this event, for this day, to come to Evergreen Church will come. But it has to happen through someone, right? Who will be God's ram's horn? I want to be. Nobody else? We fixed the air conditioning. I gave that air conditioning guy our postcard. Come to Jubilee, I told him. Hopefully he'll come. All right? So in the end times, when Christ returns, his trumpet will sound and he will gather together his elect, the Bible says. In Matthew 24, 31, it says he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. So you guys are those angels. If you go out with God's word, you're the angels who will sound the trumpet. Don't think of angels as beings with wings. Okay? Angels are anybody who does God's will, who does God's work. So I pray that this November 9th, our Jubilee event, will truly be not just in name, but truly be a spiritual Jubilee for many people and many souls. And may God use us to fill this sanctuary and call together all of his elect people in this area so that they may return to their rightful place, to God's household, that they may become God's children as well. Amen? All right, all right let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. For we have not done anything. We deserve nothing, for we have no merit. And yet, according to your grace and your love, you have called us to yourself, accepted us as your children, and enabled our hearts to receive your word. And we give you thanks and glory and all praise. Father God, and now we want to do the same for many of the other souls who are around us. May we become your angels who will sound the trumpet of the ram's horn. May we be bold in proclaiming God's message. May the Holy Spirit use us to invite those people whom you have foreordained before the ages. May this be their jubilee so that they may return to you and become part of God's covenant community and your family. We thank you for your grace upon our lives and all your blessings. And as we give this offering to you, may we give it with all of our hearts. May this offering be glory to you and may it be used for the expansion of your kingdom. We thank you so much and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give glory to God with our applause.